What's going on, everybody? We are live for another episode of the Best Ball Bash, JWB Fantasy Football's home for everything best ball, brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, where if you sign up with code JWB, you get a first-time deposit match up to $100. I'm your host, as always, Wyatt. Tonight, I'm joined by my friend, a.k.a. or Matt, a.k.a. Wispy the Kid. I am all over the place through this intro, but we're going to be drafting the big board tonight, Uh, so stay tuned with us. We're going to be getting into that in just a moment. Welcome. You're listening to JWB Fantasy Football. Thanks for listening. I, I don't know if it's like jitters from the last time we recorded and my internet like went out in the middle of it that I'm struggling to get through the beginning of the show, but here we are. Matt, how are you? I, I'm doing well. I'm a little under the weather health-wise, but I'll power through. Got to get... <laughs> Got to get a, my last big board in before uh, I start crushing these next little boards. You have a little board coming out today. 20 max. Uh, great tournament for everybody like trying to get into these best ball tournaments because they're $3 a piece. Uh, only 20 max. So you can max it for 60 bucks. Pretty cool. And you can try some stuff, to be honest. Yeah. Like, with the $3 one, it's a lot. It's a much better place to try things. When you start to, like, when you get into um, <clears throat> best ball mania season, <clears throat> sorry uh, <laughs> when you get into best ball mania season like the adp is going to kind of lock you in at a certain point and it, it sort of becomes this well i don't want to take this guy at the 107 i want to take this right. guy who's at 112 and at, i think these little boards and um whenever you get like the palms and all those they're just a great place to kind of if you have a strategy that you haven't tried yet you don't know you've never done a true true zero rp where you go extreme on it or something like that and you just kind of want to see how you feel it's a lot better to do that hate your team when you only invested three dollars versus uh when you're 25 in yeah and like you mentioned about like the the adps in these like these tournaments that have been going on like you look at the big board now just getting in now is a little bit tough because it's like there's already a bunch of teams who have like all these adp discounts or whatever you know from the very beginning whereas you get into the little board uh that's not the case we're just drafting off what the current ADPs are, you know? Yeah. Um, okay, so we're going to be drafting the big board. But before we get there, Stefan Diggs trade, obviously very big. Uh, and this creates a lot of impact for these drafts. Uh, what What are your thoughts for what this means for Houston? Well, I think it means that their passing game, which was already arguably the most fun in the league at the end of the year last year, <laughs> is almost assuredly the most fun team in the league. And... You add it, I mean, even it's easy to forget him now in hindsight, but like adding Mixon too, that offense is just, it, they legitimately have a case to be one of the best offenses in the NFL. And I guess from a drafting perspective, kind of sucks for all the receivers a little bit. Um, you, I mean, you're, you're probably not loving digs in a late second, early third. You're probably not liking Nico Collins a ton at a late in the mid third somewhere. I haven't checked his recent ADP move, but you're probably not loving it. And Tank Dell, if you got early shares of that when he was in the like third and fourth round, you're probably hating uh, that move more than anything. And so, I mean, it, it's definitely a big, a, it can't be anything but a huge boost to um, CJ Stroud, who honestly could be top four. QB ish for me. Um, mm-hmm. Probably pushes into that range. Um, the only thing without hit a huge mobility, it's always going to, I'm always going to slightly favor guys like Lamar just because that rushing right. bonus may go insane. Um, but I mean, those guys, yeah. I, I mean, the thing that we were mentioning is like for a best ball purpose, you basically are banking on that one to one and a half ish of those guys are booming every week from those three. Um, and you feel a lot better when it's when you're clicking that button, hoping for it when it's Tank Dell and not Noah Brown or right. even John Mechie. Like those guys were were all fine, but it's it's pretty clear now that they've got a three that is pretty strong and relatively top of the NFL. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very obvious. Like, way to go, CJ Stroud. We love this for him, <laughs> right? Like, you know, like yeah. that's that's the big obvious one. But then like thinking about these wide receivers um it's tough to say because i think like their adps still have a while to go before they really settle and that's the point in which we can really make some bets on cost 
but just like looking at where they're at now schematically in that offense, trying to think of like how they're all going to work together. I think it's very easy to see Nico Collins is the X in that offense. He probably is just stays there. He's probably in on every passing down or every passing down for as much as one can, you know, he's, that's going to be his spot with Stefan Diggs kind of being that slot flanker who comes inside when it's three wide receivers more often than not outside when it's two wide receivers and then tank Dell kind of fills in that third spot and kind of moves across the formation. You know, many people thought he was a slot receiver coming in the NFL. Then that's not the case. He proved that he can win on the outside in the NFL against press coverage. He did that last year. Uh, but I do think he is kind of third in that rotation just because Nico Collins is the guy who can stand up and be on the press every single play, help in the run game, those kinds of things. Something that Tank Dell should not be doing. That's how he broke his leg last year, <laughs> you know. Um, so from that perspective, just trying to think about like how much playing time they're all getting, I am still excited for Nico Collins. I think like people are going to look at him and still think like he might be the least talented of the three. I'm not going to say that that's the case. I think it's up for debate because I think like he kind of got unlocked last year by Bobby Slowick. And I think that we finally got to see his after the catch abilities really get to flourish, you know? Um, but uh, like trying to piece through who I think actually I like it cost. I'm starting to like Nico at cost because it's like Diggs, you have the could he be washed factor? Although I don't think he is. And then Dell, you have the he's coming off this injury factor. Uh, and how much does it actually affect him? Whereas Nico, it's just, well, we used to think he was bad and he was really good last year. And, you know, it's trying to piece through those things. Yeah, I mean, I think he's he's clearly the one that is the, if you're making a bet, which one of these guys is assuredly finishing as a top 25, I think that's probably where I'd put his floor at. And that's, Nico Collins is the safest bet for me there. Um, whereas Tank Dell probably sees some, sees some boom weeks just on like something works out where he just happens to be the one that gets the three receptions that are all really long plays. And right. Diggs is Diggs is Diggs. Diggs can be the best wide receiver in the NFL some weeks and can be not your favorite receiver to have on your team. But for best ball, some spike weeks here and there. I mean, I like I think there's value in taking all three. I'm probably letting Stefan Diggs's ADP settle and I'm probably letting tank Dell settle for a little bit before I'm really going back in gung ho on those two. I think it makes sense. And then can we agree that uh, Dalton Schultz is close to dead, not actually completely Dust. dead, but like way down from where we were expecting before. If you were trying to like mega stack that team and you have Dalton Schultz, uh, you probably <laughs> just have a double stack. Right. Right. <laughs> I like, the, I like the way of putting that. All right. Let's get into this draft here. Give the people what they want. Toronto Dave in the building. We appreciate you. Um, okay, we're only waiting for one, so this shouldn't take too long. Uh, is there anybody in the first round where you're like, this ADP is just wrong? No, not really. I think the AD, I, I don't think it's settled, but I think there's a little... I'm a little scared of Justin Jefferson at cost. I know he's he is the best receiver in the NFL, but... It's either Sam Darnold or J.J. McCarthy throwing to him. I'm assuming J.J. McCarthy and not Drake May. And that yep. worries me a tiny bit. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I, I I tweeted out, like I made a meme basically the, uh, a few weeks ago that of the Justin Jefferson basically like it's the bell curve one. And at the front it's like Justin Jefferson's the best wide receiver in the league. Yeah. Then at the top it's, but who's this quarterback? And then the bottom is... Justin Jefferson's the best wide receiver in the league. And to an extent, I still feel that, but I do get like the little bit concerned where like before I was like, he's, he's my number one receiver. And now it's, mm -hmm. I'm going to take Hill and lamb over him. Absolutely. Um, I probably take chase just because I do think that when it's all said and done, <clears throat> I think T Higgins is going somewhere on draft night. It feels like it's perhaps the bills. The clear. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that would make sense. Uh, there, that's a clear-cut time when they make that move. And, I mean, I, it, yeah, Tyler Boyd's gone, so. Okay, I mean, we're, on the one, we're the 102. <laughs> we're up. Uh, are you Lamb, Hill? I'm Lamb. I, Lamb was the most uh, dominant wide receiver last year by a pretty decent share. He was yes. not only giving you spikes, but it was it was regular 
production. You, there was not a week where he was down. And I'm not a guy who says you have to get weekly production, uh, have to do that, um, particularly in best ball. I think per game matters, but he is pretty clear cut the guy <clears throat> there. And uh, they're definitely going to lean even more on him this season because he's proven to be the centerpiece of that offense, especially with, you know, maybe Zeke as their starting running back. And yeah. 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 At Zeke holding, holding place for Jonathan Brooks until he's healthy. I mean, uh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I'm with you. Lamb is, is my uh, number one wide receiver as of now, my one Oh two. I do. I still take Christian McCaffrey one one but with that little bit of doubt, for Justin Jefferson's QB, it's it's Lamb as the first wide receiver off the board for me for all the things you said. And I don't think there's anything wrong with taking Justin Jefferson number one because, like you said, he is the best in the NFL, and he has been a little bit QB proof. He's played with some roller coaster QBs. Yep. Um, I don't know that there's a huge reason to be afraid of it. It's just you have to hope that JJ McCarthy knows how to pass and. Well, I think like the the big reason if you're going to have some doubt is just the overall touchdown ceiling for him with his QBs. Because like even last year with Nick Mullins, he was averaging 100 receiving yards a game. You know, like mm-hmm. Kevin O'Connell's a good offensive coach. He's a good head coach. He can make the offense work. I think he has a good offensive system. Uh, even Sam Darnold could have success for That's Kevin true. O'Connell. It's just how many touchdown passes are they throwing when they're used to having Kirk Cousins throw for 30 plus every year, you know? if Justin Jefferson's touchdown equity is just a little bit smaller because of that, uh, I think that's the, the argument against him not being the number one receiver anymore. I would agree with that. All right. Um, let's take a look real quick about what's going to be coming back to us, you know, uh, at this turn that we'll be on, you know, we look at DJ Moore, Debo Samuel, Chris Olave, Stephon Diggs, as he is settling. I, it's weird. His his ADP seems to have actually grown. Yeah, his ADPs it's not moved a yeah. ton because he was in. I think two at, like near up. the turn anyway. Yeah. Interesting. Did not expect that to happen. Better quarterback. That's yeah. I yeah. That's true. We uh we did a dynasty episode for for the for the channel uh talking about that trade, and we mentioned you know like you kind of would rather have CJ Stroud throwing the ball to your receiver than Josh Allen. No slight to Josh Allen, just that CJ Stroud is that good. Yeah. I, I mean, it, I, when I say that, I say it like 80% in jazz. Obviously that's crazy to take him that high. Um, uh, I do think. <laughs> yeah. As Diggs goes at the uh, pick 18. <clears throat> I do think CJ Stroud from a pure accuracy perspective is at that special level. I think that's what right. his best trait was. Mm-hmm. Um, ball placement so, is another low. So we're looking at the two or three wide receivers that I have a fair bit of because I have <laughs> my top ownership are their stacks. So gotcha. I'm good. I I think I prefer. Uh, I mean, I prefer Ayuk to Debo, but only slightly. Um, I'm with you. So I would probably go Ayuk here, and yeah, even even if. Even with Nico there, I probably just want to go I because I like the Purdy stack. A fair yes, bit. and I want to see if Collins comes back and we can have a conversation about it then and see if like that's going to be a thing, you know, with his ADP. True. Also, Debo just went ahead. Of, uh, I yeah, dr- yeah, directly ahead. Missed that. So Nico is he there. Did. If we want to still do that, I think it's pretty strong, and that's. I would probably go Nico here. I like him a lot more than the other receivers on the board. And I'm I not agree. at this point ready to detour onto quarterback. And Josh Jacobs does not excite me enough to go running back. Yeah. And we just set it, we set ourselves up for like three different stacking options that I'm all into. And they're all pretty gettable would be yes. my, I, I think there's this, there's a lot of these elite ones that are really fun to get. Um, And then you realize like, oh, if I want to have this, I have to invest a top three three or four round pick into quarterback. Yeah, That was how Diggs was for me. Like Diggs, the best kind of place was you really were hoping to have like the 102 um, because then you could just get Allen on the wrap. Right. Um, But I do think it's a, uh, 
yeah, it, it's a nice cost for any of those because I'm pretty comfortable taking Stroud with either one of these two picks if he makes it back. I'm not confident he will because of the guy taking Diggs so early. I just have a gut feeling that's going to be a CJ Stroud pick. <laughs> Uh, real quick, want to say what's up to Detman in the chat. Appreciate you being here. Also, my guy, Hollywood Titan. Appreciate y'all. Um, I want to quickly look at where Tank Dell's ADP sits at. 36. I imagine that continues to drop. I'm just looking because, like, let's say he does come back to 47. Or we take a Tank Dell and then CJ Stroud at 50. I mean, that's a stack. That's That's the stack to build. It feels a lot better than my two, three, four one that I think I had from semi early in the set, early <laughs> in the cycle. <laughs> um, just you know, thinking about if that happens, would we be interested in doing it? Which I think I would be. It's just yeah. a matter of if Dell does fall that far, which I think that he should be personally. I would. Yeah, I only didn't. Which one got? Nope, I went at pick thirty nine. Yeah. Okay. So I got a question about tight end. How do you feel about Laporta as tight end one? I am a little queasy with it. That one, I don't <laughs> love. Not, Here's the not deal. Gonna lie. I, I have no problem with Sam Laporta being tight end one. I have no problem with the tight end one costing a third round pick. Uh, that seems actually pretty cheap compared to what Kelsey mm-hmm. has been in recent years. Yeah. The only the thing though is that there's a lot of good tight end prices right now. So I tend to only take Sam Laporta if I've taken Amaran St. Brown or Jameer Gibbs and I want to build out the Detroit team. Otherwise, it's I just don't take it because Trey McBride is a great price. Mark Andrews has a great price. Pitts ain't too bad. Uh, you know, there's hey, you can look at uh Dalton Kincaid even more now. So there's there's prices I like. Yeah, I think for me, Kincaid would be a pretty easy click over him, um, which is weird because I'm doing the same thing. It's just I, Kincaid has no, he doesn't have Amon Ross St. Brown next to him um, taking targets. Detman says he's out on Laporta as tight end one. Right, Detman, let me ask you, are you saying is tight end one just in general or drafting him as the tight end one with like considering the other prices? Uh, we are about to be up in a pick. I would smash a Dunze or McBride if it's me by myself. I am I'm with you on a Dunze. Okay, cool. And then you I'm take probably Stroud on the way back. If, take a uh, little break on a little break on wide receivers, which is a weird feeling for me, but I think <laughs> that there's I with the amount of rookies you can get late that are good good rookies, rookie, yeah. Rookie bets. Um I don't. I think this is a year, at least right now, until their ADPs start to uh, stabilize. I think it's it's good to fill up your the back of your team with some of those like lottery ticket receivers. Are we, and that makes me feel a lot better about taking Stroud. Yeah. Okay. Him taking. I would have felt a little gross taking uh taking Stroud ahead of Lamar after I just said that Lamar's rushing outside. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But it's different when you're in when you're building the the stack out. When you're just talking in a vacuum, it's okay. You know, we understand. Yeah. But once we're, I mean, roster a roster construction is is what matters. A lot of best ball teams. It's how do yeah. you build your teams? Uh, Detman did clarify saying ADP drafting is the tight end one uh, prices. He likes uh, Andrews McBride at ADP over him. Yeah, I'm with yeah. you. I almost was going to push for uh, Andrews over at Dunes. It was the only other guy that I was really thinking. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't hate it. Oh, well, you were thinking uh, McBride, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I I like McBride more just because I think, like, um, target volume, I think, can even be greater than uh, Andrews, even with Marvin Harrison Jr. coming into town expectedly. Like, after those two, there just isn't, there isn't enough, and I think that both of them are going to be 20-plus target share players. Um, and yeah, that's uh, an, I think Cardinals could pass more than the Ravens. That's a pretty bad room. Uh, wide receiver room. <laughs> yes, Michael Wilson is currently the best wide receiver on the roster. It's not the worst wide receiver room in the NFL because the Chargers exist, but <laughs> right, it's really bad. Yes. Oh, Trey McBride falls to the Travis uh, Travis Kelsey drafter. That guy's got a fun team. AJ Brown, Marvin Harrison, Jalen Hurts, Kelsey McBride. See, I mean, if he can push late he can kind of push a uh, qb and go 
I mean, am I betting Kyler? I guess I'm betting Kyler still. Um, I love Kyler, and I think he has a great price. I think at price, I you still like him. Yeah, but I, if you're going Kyler and Jalen Hurts, you might want a QB3 on that roster, but I also don't think you have to take one. I probably wouldn't. Yeah. I, I get, like, why you say that, because these are two players who uh, – are more prone to injury, I would say, than your average QB. But, uh, yeah, I, I probably would not do it. I think what's interesting here is that the Josh Allen drafter took Alvin Kamara instead of Dalton Kincaid. And then, Weird. of course, ends up not getting it. I think at this point in time, if you're taking Josh Allen, you basically have to be taking Kincaid. Yeah, it feels like a, an auto-click. Uh, so we will be up in a pick here. Uh, Pacheco has fallen quite a bit. Yeah, Pacheco kind of feels like the one. It's a nice little detour to running back. Yeah, and he catches passes. Yeah, I think this person ahead of us is deciding if they actually want to be up to three running backs already. <laughs> yeah, yep. they end up making the decision to do it. Uh, so we, Kenneth Walker's sitting there. Uh, he's also fallen past ADP. I don't mind. I haven't been clicking a lot of him, but I don't mind it when he's fallen now. Uh, I think I prefer him to Aaron Jones. Um and at price now that we're talking about, I mean, more than half a round of value on him. All right, let's let's do it. I'll, it's, I'll it's, take the discount. It's not my favorite offense to hitch my wagon to, but I think oh. that's weird. Yeah, I think we got a, a little bit of a <laughs> technical difficulty there from underdog for a second. Uh, it's a good thing we queued. I'm going to make sure to queue our next pick and then uh, – See yeah, I, to, uh, I don't have a uh, huge preference page. here. I'd probably go Connor or Montgomery. Although I do, uh, I do love I, I, Evan Ingram, but I was about to say Ingram because I think he's one of the best. Or we can go picks. full sweat and go Brock Bowers way early, but <laughs> I don't. Um, I don't think we bet on the rookie tight end having the same type of dominance they did last year. But whoa. Ingram, yeah, that was weird. Uh, Again, yeah. We got some lag, it appears. Yeah, got, got on the clock with three seconds. Managed to have some quick hands and get that star on Ingram, but uh, that was interesting. I'm good with Ingram. Ingram gives us, we're, we're getting a legit tight end. Um, I don't, yes. and it's not, it is one that like we could. It's another guy that late on, later on than he probably should, um, based on talent be going. You could grab Lawrence as the pair with, your tight end because it's always pretty beneficial mm -hmm. going into the final week to have the tight end stack as we found like i think the last two um two best ball manias have really been swung by like one tight end pairing because it was trey mcbride two mm -hmm. years ago and it was shoot who's the other why can't i think of his name who's the other tight or the other saints receiver that isn't juan johnson yeah it was juan johnson and juan johnson had a huge game um late and so those stacks if they were i mean he, he was valuable um i'm always kind of on board for looking for that tight end yeah mm -hmm. no i'm with you um he, evan ingram's honestly one of the safest too to go along with the ceiling that he has when we see him get like 14 target games that can happen sometimes you know mm -hmm. um especially with Calvin Ridley moving on and then replacing him with Gabe Davis. I mean, I think that they, they should be looking at first round receivers. Um, I don't like know. A if lot they of will. teams should be. Yeah. A lot of teams. I, I personally want it to be Brian Thomas. I think that's a great fit for them. Um, someone who could just, they can put out at X, X uh, and be better than Gabe Davis, honestly. Um, yeah. Because I think Gabe Davis is just okay. And he's not a long-term solution. Was that a pretty big reach on Xavier Worthy? Uh, I think it's a little bit. I feel bit like that not, was. Yeah. Uh, just over around. Around and yeah. I thought I'd been getting him more in that ninth, but yeah. yeah. I think him and Mitchell are both around a hundred still. Yeah, because Eddie Mitchell was the. I did Mitchell go too? Did I miss that? Oh, oh he yeah, went at pick seventy-seven. That's silly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm all for, like I said, I'm, I'm all for getting pieces of this rookie class, which might be a potentially special rookie class. Um, did he do what I said? Oh, no. Uh, no, the Kyler, Kyler I drafter took Brock Bowers. And he didn't get Kyler because Kyler went 
right before. That's got to be a misclick or something. Kyler's not an eighth round pick. I don't know. I don't know what's happening here. There's some that's that's a lot of things happening in this draft. Nothing like throw out your draft worthy. I've had a <laughs> couple of those this off season, but that that feels like he might have had somebody in the queue and uh, wasn't paying attention. Let's get uh, James Connor in the queue. Yeah, I do. I do like Connor. When you said him, I was thinking about it, but I just like Dinger more. Um, I also then, like Warren. Warren. Yeah. yeah. We gotta we gotta throw Purdy in the queue because he'll be on our back. Yep. Yeah. And then I, mean, I like taking just one of these running backs and then Purdy on the way back. Absolutely. Connor on the discount, gotta love it. Yeah. And then if I mean Purdy comes back to us, it's you got your stack built up and done it quarterback. I mean. Easy peasy. I mean, we're just we're just strolling right through this draft right now. Sometimes things work out. I mean, we talked about we talked about <laughs> Nico Collins being the safe option. Nico Collins falls in our lap. We talked yeah. about the Stroud stack. We got the Stroud stack. <laughs> Debated Connor twenty you know twenty picks ago. <laughs> got him anyways. Connor Connor is just ex- like he's he was last year what twenty twenty three no I can't my years broken twenty twenty two. Josh Jacobs was like, he was the obvious candidate to be like, yeah, that receiver, that running back you've all given up on and you've moved on from, yeah. uh, you might call him washed. Oh, by the way, he's uh, getting all the volume. To be fair, that's just been James Conner in Arizona every day, every year. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. James <laughs> Conner is probably washed at every point of his career, but also by the way, he's still, yeah, just gets volume and volume is all that matters. Uh, Devin saying that Connor always seems to be a discount. I'll say that his ADP is kind of a discount to begin with. Uh, so anytime you get him after that, it's really nice. Yes. What? Are, so what are your thoughts on Eckler? Because I saw uh, him go two picks after us. Probably it my heart. pretty close to dust. Yeah, Certainly closer to dust than bit. not. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I, I think it's easy to pin a lot of his last year struggles on the, the high ankle injury, mm-hmm. but he's also now twenty nine. So like, how often do we expect like him to come back? Uh, you know, back to the same way he was. Like and... the Chargers, the Chargers just let him walk, and he signed mm-hmm. like a pretty mediocre contract. Oh, the on the day where everybody, every running back in the NFL was getting bags of money. Yeah. They get two years, eight million, something yeah, like that. It was. They throw a McDonald's bag of money at him, and we're like, <laughs> "Oh, this is all you get." The duffel yeah, bag was two years, eight someone million. Else. Yeah. I I I think he's probably going to play a lot of third downs for the Commanders and mix in to spell Brian Robinson. Uh, yeah, yeah, Brian Robinson. I think Brian Robinson's ADP falling because of that was a mistake. I already liked his ADP, and I love it now. Yeah, Brian Robinson was. He was a guy that I'm mad at myself for not actually betting on more when everything I saw loved him. Mm-hmm. Jo- just can you queue up Jonathan Brooks just so he's there? I okay, I was I was actually about to. Uh, I've been drafting a lot of Brooks. I, the injury doesn't bother me too much. Well, I just I, he'd be that he would be the he would be the running back one in this class if it weren't for his injury. Yeah. Now I think it should be Trey Benson, but. I think he would be the he'd be the one. I'm still reserving the right to have Brooks there when the Cowboys take him in the second round. Yeah, if he gets capital and it sounds like he'll be ready by uh, start of the season, you know, you I, know about the Cowboys doctors doing the surgery for him, right? Did they? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, so like, I mean, the the ties are there. Um, we should probably do Brooks first. Yes, because I would and say, then, and we're just getting. Because if we if we one. do miss on Lawrence, if he does get sni- snapped up here, then I'm not too upset because I'm okay if this has to be a two QB build. But I prefer I like three if you have three that you trust. Or if you have I think in these that. twenty round drafts, it's kind of a luxury that you get to do. Yeah. Um, where we've seen, you know, tournament winning Schultz there too. 
uh, tournament winning teams have three QBs because it gives them another game, uh, another stack to work with in the tournament mm -hmm. rounds. Uh, you know, just it kind of builds up the the ceiling of the team a little bit. And I think we've drafted well enough to this point to be really comfortable doing that, even though it seems probably aggressive at QB. It is, and I think it's gonna we're gonna be getting grabbing some of those late values that we talked about at tight end um, to fill out that tight end room. And honestly, like if you're talking about our like 18th, yep. Uh, Baker Mayfield in the 11th round. Does he have a single Tampa Bay player? Chris Godwin, Rashad White. Okay. Yeah, he panicked. Yeah. I mean, it's a, I don't want to miss him. Yeah. I, I've done that. Like you kind of panic, take someone just because you like talk yourself into the fact that he might get taken or you like you start the draft that way, and you're like, "Let me queue up Baker Mayfield so that yeah. I know I I can look out for him." And then the time comes, and you're like, "I don't know who to pick." And you're like, "Well, I know I want Baker. I'll take Baker." Yeah. Because if I'm being honest, like, uh, J and a naked Jaden Daniels, not unstacked completely, nothing. Jaden Daniels, I take over Baker in a in any <laughs> type of stack, um, just because pure upside. Right. It's like kind of think you know what you're getting out of Baker. Probably mm -hmm. good. Probably not the yeah. spike week that you need to game. win. Yeah, like I don't... I, he is the third QB I want in my QBs if I'm building my stacks out because of the fact that I have, don't think he has the weekly chance to win a, a large tournament for me. Now, maybe that makes him unique, but stand by my... <laughs> Your player take there? I know better. No. Uh, IKB. Uh, I'm going to star yeah. some people... As we can we just start on. all Michigan players to just really no. <laughs> yeah, just to really screw you. Uh, I anyone actually, out there who doesn't know big, say, big Ohio State person over here. Uh if anyone doesn't know what I'm actually like remembered for about Scott Fishbowl last year, it's that I started my draft <laughs> with like beautiful. 13 consecutive buckeyes. <laughs> uh, uh I don't want to take Jerry Judy. I I would like for you to start on Tavian Wicks. I'm cool with that. Okay. Anyone else on the screen my... you want? Mm, no. Maybe. I mean, yeah, I'm good. Okay. I O. <laughs> ah, Dynasty Coach A in the building saying that we should be starring some Mims. Newest member of JWB. Appreciate you for coming by. I... I was way in on Mims last year. He was my number one owned wide receiver. You scorned. <laughs> and I got him at such a good price because I was getting yeah. him like last pick. Chuba. Uh, you you and I both have the same affinity for Chuba. Yeah. We were both like way overweight on him last year. And, and it worked picks out. picks after ADP? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, Wix, Wix is one of my guys because I think he, I think he might be the best receiver in that group. Like, yeah. He might I be, like but we, we don't know because Sean Payton hates him. Yeah. I, I can't get over Sean Payton saying that he, like, you know, he's got to do a better job of getting him on the field, and it was tough because him and Judy play the same position, and you're telling me you can't find a way to get those two on the field at the same time? You got to get yeah. snaps to Brandon Johnson and little Jordan Humphrey? Right. No, <laughs> I, Marvin Mims was, I mean – by every analytics like measurement, he was just an elite wide receiver because he broke out as a freshman, like a legit breakout as a freshman. He was a, um, uh, he kept his overall career market share high enough. He was he was truly a dominant college prospect, and you just saw him land in a spot that had the opportunity for him and go. He had like a spike week in week. Did he have a spike week in week one? He had a big it was week very one early. Week. I can't remember the week, though. And it was just like, oh, everyone's figuring out who Mims is. And then he never did it again. <laughs> he had, like, their all of their longest plays for the season. <laughs> We're all Marvin Mims. I do think, like, uh, there's a little bit of this, uh, I guess, fraudulism to his. Is that a word? Fraudulism? I don't know. To his profile and that we're, like, learning that the college slot fade is a cheat code that's really hard yeah. to defend. And Marvin Mims did a lot of that. Uh, so some of his production comes from that way. And like when one player 
gets a lot of his production in that way, we should at least uh, put a pin in it to like to yeah to to look at that. Um, but even with that, his his prospect profile was very good <laughs> coming into the NFL, and you just like wonder what really happened there. Yeah, and uh, I always assume with like try to assume rational coaching for college coaches and they will want to get the ball in the hands of their best, their best football player. seems like a, just a straight, yeah. straight line. They want ball in hands. So if they've just said cheat code play is go to Marvin Mims on slot fade uh, and they run it a whole lot, it's probably a reason. And it's not just, Oh, Marvin Mims fast. <laughs> right. Right. Ah, there he goes. And also my actual favorite rookie wide receiver prospect in the draft, Roman Wilson, which hurts my hurts me to my soul so bad. <laughs> like he's my Michigan favorite player. Well, he would be my favorite. Um, he would be my favorite uh, receiver. I mean, Marvin Harrison is my favorite wide receiver in the class. He's Obviously. he's the next. He's the next Randy Moss. He's going to break the league. <laughs> Roman Wilson has elite speed. Had a really nice analytics profile when you actually took into account like how little the team passed and when right. they passed, it was to Roman Wilson. Um, he's, I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> that I had not here for the Michigan. Like I, I so I, I write every year for action network. I write um, Debbie and um, dynasty prospects playing in the national championship game. Um, I write that. And then I also do some betting stuff alongside of it. And when I pulled up, his yards per route run and where he broke in and like his dominator rating, it hurt my heart so bad to write nice things about Roman Wilson. <laughs> and when he, when I was just like, Oh, and by the way, he's going to be a freak testing. Cool. I'm going to have to like him. And it's like, he's just be, he's probably like, I have my exposures here, but I think he's within like my top five of exposures right now for yeah. wide receiver. Um, I'm just not going to say a word right now because I'm waiting on one guy who is my actual top exposure of any rookie. Can you just click Braylon Allen for me? Oh, my guy. <laughs> what am I t uh, <laughs> he's, he's top five exposure for me. Um, that one's pretty <laughs> Braylon easy. Braylon Allen is, is – uh, I think people kind of just forget how good he is. Um, we are back up, so we can talk about Braylon Allen in a second. All right. Uh, I don't really want to take Antonio you... Gibson anymore. Okay, let's go. Um, likely. Oh, I'm fine with that. Okay. I think we do need to get another tight end. We're kind of getting to that point where we're going to start dropping off the face of the earth um, yeah. on some yeah. of these talent. Likely sure. isn't a huge volume guy, but I also don't think that the Ravens are ever going to use their wide receivers effectively. So they're going to continue to roll out 12 personnel on every play they can. I think they should be. I think they need to get likely on the field with Mark Andrews more. Uh, likely he's just really good. Yes. And if anything happens to Mark Andrews again, we know he's like a top five tight end essentially in that offense. So, I mean, you've got that. And now we've got, we're on five running backs or six. Right? Five, which is why I wanted to stop. Uh, yeah, I don't because, want you know, Gibson we, at that price there. We, we, we filled out that running back room pretty good, I would say. So like, mm -hmm. I'm fine with one more at the end of the draft, but after getting Braylon Allen there, I, I didn't feel a need for any more. I think that's a, the type of room you want to build in this draft where you're getting a lit. It's why I say that like, nor it, when it comes down to like the regular season, when uh, ADPs are a little more solidified, I'm really comfortable going six wide receivers in the first eight rounds and honestly punting other than like one running back mm -hmm. way down. Right now, with ADPs very much in flux, and the fact that some of these rookies may end up skyrocketing, getting a it's a it's a bad word now, but Jonathan Mingo type like buzz, where yeah. all of a sudden they go from like a last round pick to like a twelfth round pick. Um, getting right. some of those guys now for these late round spots, um, you're getting enough to fill out that, and you don't necessarily have to go with true zero RB. And so I'm I'm probably more in the four in the first eight um it, with maybe sometimes i go more if the room falls my way um let's let's hit back on braylon allen because uh i i cut you off when you started to get into that it was a 17 year old linebacker <laughs> Wisconsin. 
He was a 17 year old linebacker when he stepped on the field to play running back for Wisconsin. Um, he, I mean, he's an, he's, he's a freak athlete. He's, uh, he's, I mean, I know Derek Henry picture came out with him and he made him look small, but (laughs) he's not like he's 235 pounds. All I will say is if you like Audric Estime, there is a better version of Audric Estime from a projectable standpoint. Like Braylon Allen yeah. has the potential to be Derrick Henry light. Yeah. To an extent. I, I, I understand his lack of receiving chops, although he got a little bit more in this last season there with Wisconsin. I understand that he probably doesn't use his size the way that he probably should all the time. And maybe his feet are a little bit slow. I can't get past what you said, you know, like 17 year old came on as a linebacker, switched to running back and kind of took, you know, the team by storm there and, and really produced. And you just look at him like he is not a finished product yet. Uh, I think there's plenty of growth for him still to come knowing that he's only been playing running back for three years, you know, in his entire football career. I, I think there's plenty to come. Um, Detman wants to know about Marshawn Lloyd. What do you think? He's a good prospect. I, I'm not as high on him as most. Um, God, a lot of my guys are there. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, that's my other one. Um, I There are some people who are putting Marshawn Lloyd as the uh, like running back one in this class. I can't get quite there. He's probably – four or five for me. Um, I think he's talented, but I don't know. I, I'm just not, I'm not as sold on him as I am on some of the other guys that were instant impact guys like Braylon Allen. Um, heck even Estime. But I, I, like I said, I think a lot of this conversation would be different if Jonathan Brooks never got hurt last year. I think there would be a clear cut tier. You good with Polk real quick. Yep. Okay. It's not my favorite receiver from that team, but yeah, I, I am, uh, I think Jalen McMillan is still underpriced because I think if you ask the Washington beat reporters from there, they would say he was the most talented player, most talented receiver of the bunch. Um, and it didn't quite hit. I'm good with Davis if that's what you want to click or I'm good with Baker. Um, I'm debating Baker just because of filling out what run, uh, water receiver a little yeah. bit more. We do have, or uh, I was going to say, oh, Zay Jones, we could have grabbed Zay. Oh, yeah, to continue to build out Jacksonville a little bit more. I just like, I don't, I don't select Zay Zay Jones like at all. (laughs) That's fair. (laughs) I am, I am emotionally attached to Zay Jones because I wrote an article about him coming out of college. Um, He was one of my first players that I, uh, I did a profile on and it was because somebody sent out a tweet. And they were talking about like, oh, the most, the highest reception totals from one game. And the tweet just said, who the fuck is Zay Jones? And it was because they had like a game for him where yeah. he had 22 receptions or something. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, by the way, that, uh, that's, uh, so I fell in love with him after that. And then the Buffalo stuff just went awful. Yeah. But he's had a little resurgence. He's I do have a flip up to wide receiver too, but. I do have a little bit of affinity to him because two years ago I was in on Zay Jones's first year with the Jaguars. I just since then have been back out. I do want to hit on a couple things though. Talking about Marshawn Lloyd, like if you look at his analytical profile, not that great. Uh, the USC offense though, I think was a little bit wonky in that way. Um, and then uh, I've I've heard film people really like Marshawn Lloyd though, and he's got like the measurables you want, the athletic testing you want. So like. I find myself somewhere just on the sidelines, kind of agnostic to him. And I'll kind of let like the market decide if I'm in or out on Marshawn Lloyd. Um, and then I wanted to note that uh, Dynasty Coach A here mentioned that how uh, Wisconsin changed to a shotgun offense, Wisconsin's uh, last year, which um, affected Braylon Allen and mentioning how that's not really his game. I've heard that before. Uh, does that, does that track for you, Matt? Yeah. I mean, with the, the coaching change last year, the Phil Longo offense was pretty clearly a work in progress for uh, that Wisconsin team. And he seemed to be the one that was hit the hardest. Um, they also had sort, if I remember correctly, they had 
two quarterbacks play. They had some injury issues at quarterback, which just impacted the offense as a total. But it really was just a matter of that whole, like everything felt like it was a work in progress. And he was, he was definitely one that was impacted. Yeah. Toronto Dave also saying that McMillan clears. Detman agrees with McMillan and also saying that he's a big Lloyd guy. I think um, Lloyd is going to be a, a desi- decisive prospect just because of that, like film versus analytics thing a little bit. And that's honestly fair. I think that's probably, you have a few of those every year. Um, as an analytics guy, I feel like I've been on the right side. A lot of those arguments, um, I will never I, forget I, the people who told me Riley Ridley was wide receiver one in his class. <laughs> I, I should I ask, really uh, dynasty coach, Hey John, if you're still in the chat, John does a lot of prospect modeling. I'd like to know what he thinks about Marshawn Lloyd's, uh, analytical profile. He could probably comment a little bit better than I can. Uh, all right, so let's take a look real quick. Um, we probably want a third tight end, and we should think about that. Yeah. I do like Noah Fant. I also like Tucker Craft because I think Tucker Craft could just be the better tight end. And there he goes. So, Someone heard you. That's what I got. Um, I mean, we're at the point now where ADP is sort of irrelevant. We're kind of yep. in the range where, like, you can pick whatever you want. Will um, Shipley is interesting. Dylan Lobb is interesting. Yeah, I think I'll go Shipley, and then we'll grab a tight end on the back would be my thought. Because I think Will Shipley, I don't think he's – he's not going to be a huge volume guy just because I don't think he has the requisite size. He's also, despite what everyone thought they were going to say, he's not the next Christian McCaffrey just because he's a white agile running back. <laughs> um, yeah. But I do think there's some some benefit. That, like, he is – he's skilled. Um Sorry, I'm just like fingers crossed real quick. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I feel I mean, like there's a little drop off once he's in. The, well, in he's this person already has three tight ends. Yeah, so I don't see why he would take Fant unless it's just an auto draft here and it comes off the top. In which case, but I would say took we, Dylan, but we would wait because I, I, I would just look at like well. Sanat or Theo Johnson or something as last pick. Goes with Waller. I'm good with that. Okay, then I quickly want to see. Uh, John said that he interviewed Lloyd at the Senior Bowl and fell in love with him, and then Beth was already smitten. Please, if you don't mind giving a little bit of details into uh, how he looked in Be- Beth, which is his model, uh, for those who don't know, the, uh, that is the, the name he's given to his prospect modeling, um, what, where, he, where he might shine a little bit in, uh, in Beth that makes him look so good. I thought Beth was like a wife. That, that would also <laughs> uh, it basically sense. is. <laughs> Um, so one pick to go. I mean, it's probably wide receiver. Um, and you just pick a dart yeah. throw. Um, yep. So let's, let's just star some people. Uh, if you like, I'm, I'm not going to give me names. Um, I'll scroll if you want me to Andre Isla. I can't say his name. Yoshivas. Yeah. Um, Johnny I only Wilson know that because I know his nickname was Yoshi. Uh, Johnny Wilson shouldn't be playing wide receiver, but he's six foot seven. So, yeah. And then Luke McCaffrey, cause he is legitimately a freak athlete. And then guy. That is, yeah. Well, I mean, he is actually legitimately a, a crazy athlete. Oh, he and is. Yeah. Guy, I'm saying and lineage. Yeah, yeah. And then Jacob Cohen, uh, should be considered a much better prospect, um, than he is. His, his profile is pretty absurd. That's probably where I stop because I'm not going to make you star trailer. Star do you do you want it in this order or do you want me to move around? I would put Wilson, Cohen, Yoshi. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Just because I, I do think if you're talking about a guy that just like all he does is get on the field for red zone, um, give me the six foot seven wide receiver. <laughs> who <laughs> right. A coach just goes, ooh, throw to that guy. Yeah, well, I mean, we'll take two catches for 13 yards and two touchdowns in week 17. That's fine, you know? Yeah. He is. It's funny because early in the season, there was a little bit of hype along when he was kind of going off alongside Coleman. Yeah. Um, 
And I think people were talking themselves into him like, oh, he's actually really good. It's like, no, Keon Coleman's just actually drawing some attention. And you can't single cover the six foot seven guy. Who's um, probably uh, too nimble for that size. Yes. So I uh, got some info from John about Marshawn Lloyd. Good BMI, good big time run rate. Uh, WASS. Not sure if I remember which acronym that is. Uh, there's not too much to just like besides him never truly being a workhorse in college. And that's kind of what I meant about his analytical profile is that um, you have to, he looks good in some like individual, like per carry, that kind of thing metrics, but never got the way adjusted. Yep. Oh yeah. Way adjusted speed score. That's right. Sorry. Uh, I'm used to seeing height adjusted speed score and forget about weight adjusted speed score. Yeah. That's what turned Derek Henry into an absolute freak. Yeah. It was just awful. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and I think that makes sense, Marshall, the way that I said, because, like, the offense being a little bit wonky, um, he looks good on some per carry, essentially, or per opportunity things. Uh, but he doesn't have the opportunity metrics you're really looking for, because, like, that kind of thing tends to project forward into the NFL. Um, but even that's tough with running back. I think prospecting with running back with analytics can be really tough because uh, you have to look at some running backs who are in these college backfields where they're like purposely split. Like you look at Georgia, like you have to put a bunch of context to anybody who comes from that, that team because mm -hmm. they always split up the carries, you know, and the opportunities. Uh, so they're never going to have these big counting stats or even sometimes Alabama, like Josh Jacobs, a first round pick. Like you look at his analytical profile, looks terrible. Like it does not look very mm -hmm. good, you know? Um, it's just tough. Yeah. I mean, I think I've always said that analytics are great, but you kind of need analytics with context. Um, yeah. like I don't hold Ohio state wide receivers to the same market share thresholds that I do to some other year, some other wide receivers, like in general. And like Detman pointed out yeah. this year's Ohio state backfield, neither Trey Henderson nor Quinshawn Judkins are going to, uh, Right, likely have absurd carries. They're probably both going to be in the right around 200 range on the high end. Um, and that might scare some people off. But the truth is just when you have another elite talent beside you, it's hard to justify really putting all that onto one player. Um, and so I do think analytics are great, but having a little bit of context is genuinely just a uh, important factor. Yeah, if I could try and like, clarify my thought that I was saying, too, about, like, opportunity metrics for running backs in college. Running backs who draw a lot of opportunity in college tend to be able to then do so in the NFL. But it doesn't mean that ones who don't can't Correct. because of all this, all the context that happens with some of these backfields. Yeah, uh, I think. And cowing, it is. Uh, I know I used to just use, like, the easy threshold of, like, I wanted a 200 carry season with still maintaining the six yards per carry because that was sort of the it's semi-arbitrary uh mm -hmm. threshold but it was a uh there was some value to six yards per carry um and then saquon barkley fell short of it i'm like all right so i know i say <laughs> this is really important <laughs> yeah i'm saquon barkley right all right so draft is over let's take a quick look at the team so at qb cj stroud brock purdy trevor lawrence a bit aggressive on qb but we talked about how we wanted to kind of purposely be aggressive with these three QBs when you have 20 rounds. Uh, running back, Kenneth Walker, James Conner, Jonathan Brooks, Chuba Hubbard, Braylon Allen, Will Shipley. Some really big discounts throughout there, too, which is really yeah. nice, I think. <laughs> you know, Kenneth I think getting Walker, Connor and Walker after. at that price. Yeah. Just, you feel great. Yeah, Connor, uh, 26 picks after, or 16, I can do math. Uh, Chuba Hubbard, also 16 picks after, Braylon Allen after. All good things. Also, I like the mix of veteran and rookie there in that in that section. I think what you built there with your running back room is with a Walker and Connor, you have enough running back production early in the year that your team won't be dead on or shouldn't be dead. Yeah. Um, with Brooks, Allen, Shipley, um, you're sort of hoping that they their production if they are not the lead guy right off the bat, that it sort of picks up as you start to get towards the end of the like tournament runs and where you may have a guy like Braylon Allen, who is a true lead back by 
end of season. Same with Brooks. Um, you get those two guys, and all of a sudden, you could, your team could be running back driven. Like we have a team that has Ayuk, Nico Collins, C.D. Lamb, um, and Roma Dunze, and we really might be favoring um, our running back position when we get towards the end of the year. Right. And then talking of those wide receivers, as you said, Lamb, Ayu, Collins, Adunze, also Wicks, Jalen Polk, Javon Baker, Jacob Cowing, filling out with those rookies, as we mentioned early in the draft, that we like a lot of these rookie wide receivers and we want to be attacking them late into the draft. Happy about that. We got some stacks going on here with Nico and uh, Ayuk. I mean, it's a fun little group. Um, we didn't get any like double or, I mean, some of these rookies could turn into double stacks. We don't really know, particularly right. like Cow and Baker Polk. Uh, any of those guys really could kind of fall into a placement where we are getting, we're stacking up our QB a second time. Um, man, now I feel even worse about not getting McMillan just because then we could have had the whole Washington trio. <laughs> yeah, that would have been nice. And then finishing up a tight end, Evan Ingram, Isaiah Likely, no Fant. Uh, really happy about Ingram and then getting him with Trevor Lawrence. As we talked about, Ingram just has this like safe floor because of all the volume he gets there, but also the ceiling because of that crazy volume that he can get. If you throw the, the ball to a player enough, they will probably score touchdowns. And <laughs> Evan Ingram Analytics. Did that. Hey, <laughs> yeah. Volume equals top, equals production. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. This was great. Uh, a flaw, a flawless uh, stream this time, as opposed to our last one. Happy that that was the case. I, I honestly really like the team that we got drafted here tonight. I think it worked out really well. I'm pretty happy with it. It was worth me staying up past my bedtime. So <laughs> yeah. I'm thrilled. Well, before we get out of here, please let everyone know where to find you, where to find your work, all those things. Well, on Twitter, I'm at Wispy the Kid. Um, I don't tweet a ton anymore. If I do, it's kind of more reply stuff, but I'll still have some takes every once in a while. Um, and uh, for writing uh, this season, I'll be doing college football sports betting over at action network with a, maybe a little more fantasy stuff mixed in. And then I'll be doing some college daily fantasy for fantasy points. So I got a weird room, but I, I, I write more about college, but I do a lot of best ball. So <laughs> Hey, everyone's got to find their, their lane here in this fantasy space. And I think you've done that for yourself. Uh, everyone, Matt is a very, very sharp uh, fantasy player, in my opinion. I think you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not following his work. On this side of things, you can follow me on Twitter at YP underscore FF. You can follow JWB at JWB underscore FF. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you've not done so already is the best way to support JWB. And we appreciate you greatly for doing so. In the description of this video, you'll find the link to our free Discord that is almost 800 members strong at this point. So it is going nuts every single day in there. You can also find a link to our Patreon for all of our bonus content. I mentioned the underdog uh, code. If you sign up with JWB, you get a first time to ma deposit match up to $100. I'm going to get out of here. I appreciate all of you. We'll see you next time.